What's up guys? So Realty Income is acquiring spirit. I want to talk about the deal, the ins and outs of it, what I think is the biggest attribute of the whole situation after a brief description of the company and also I want to show you my position at the end. So without any further ado, I'm going to go into allreads.com which is a website that I use that I found somebody once linked to me and I found it very beneficial to kind of give it an at a glance look at um, any kind of REIT you want. It gives a lot of metrics that are relative for REITs. I'm not affiliated, of course. And the main thing I want to focus on actually is the price action of Realty Income. It dropped all the way down to $45 at the announcement of this deal. It had been dropping prior to the deal because of things non-related to the deal, like, for example, higher interest rates ripping across the markets, especially the 30-year um, but all funding costs basically becoming prohibitively um, unaccessible. So real income dropped all the way down to 45. It's now had a really big boost to $58 uh, per share. The market cap currently is around $42 billion, but it's of course going to increase to about $63 billion once Spirit comes online. This is the price to AFFO. Adjusted funds from operation, which is 14.5. It's kind of high for REITs, but it's low um, based on the average FFO for this current REIT for realty income. Of course, realty income's had a great history of ever increasing dividends. We don't need to talk about that. The payout ratio is 77% at the moment, which is fine. It's in line. Um, current dividends to be paid. I'm expecting some more dividend increases this year as a result of this merger. The AFFO per share has been kind of slowing down a little bit, which is, which had been a bit of a concern for the REIT, but it's still going to be beating inflation, and it's um, with reinvested dividends. I'm anticipated, I'm anticipating it to beat the S&P 500 for many years to come. Uh, debt to assets is really low, and they're diversifying more and more as time goes on. Occupancy rate is pretty steady. You know, square footage is growing, uh, largest tenant by percentage is dropping. All these things are very, very good and healthy. And I like the fact that they're mostly concentrated in the U.S. So let's talk about the deal. If you want to find out about the deal, all you got to do is go to the website, realtyincome.com, and then go into the investors um, tab, and then you can find it um, under investors presentations. Annual reports and proxies, investor presentations. Once you click on it, you'll come up with this tab right here. So first, I, by the way, I strongly suggest and encourage all of you to read through this presentation so you can kind of make your own conclusions. But I'm going to tell you what I got out of it, right? So this is why I'm making the video so I can show you, I can tell you my opinion, what I got out of it. Um, so the, the main things that I, I was looking for here is... Well, first of all, their overview, um, they're claiming things like, you know, efficiencies as a result of the merger, about 50 million, and then approximately uh, 30 million of synergies, including stock-based compensation, etc. So resulting into approximately three cents per share, which is, I think, kind of meaningless. Uh, the transaction is expected to be 2.5% accretive to real, real, realty incomes F4 per share, which is good. I think mainly the efficiency comes due to the fact that the dividend was higher. Um, well, not that's not why, but as a side note, the dividend that Spirit had to its shareholders is higher than the one that Realty Income is going to give it. So it's a net win, I think, for Realty Income um, holders. So uh, also the the other big attractive. Uh, plus and benefit for realty income is that it's growing in size and as a read grows in size company grows in size period it inadvertently uh, has more access to better like debt capital um, and lower rates so i think that's going to be really good for realty income moving forward when it comes to their acquisitions because they're just basically buying stuff like crazy they really want to grow in size and get even better and better funding and size does matter when it comes to this industry so here is a really good overview of what is joining 
realty income. So the orange slash red bars are what realty income already had. So tenants like uh, Dollar General, Walgreens, 7-Eleven, Dollar Tree, etc. FedEx, Lifetime. And the blue area is what Spirit is adding. So they have a lot of the same tenants in their buildings. And Spirit also has, you know, kind of like the single building type of uh, holdings with a single tenant. And uh, they have a very similar structure to Realty Income. In fact, one of them you could argue is modeled after the other. And uh, it looks like this is actually not the most encouraging part of the deal. I don't like that Spirit is adding more Dollar General, Walgreens, and Dollar Tree because the discount stores have been suffering from online competition and, and they're not doing great. The other thing, um, you know, so I was looking for actually more 7-Elevens, but uh, Realty Income is, is bringing all those along. Um, the Win Resort is fine, you know, gaming 2.2%. I actually like that acquisition, many people didn't. And then um, what I did like, though, is the addition of Home Depot. Lifetime, I wasn't so, uh, too too happy about, but more Home Depot is always good. Home Depot is super solid of a tenant, can't go wrong, and they're adding 1.1% of that, so that's fantastic. Um, if you want to look at it for the breakdown over here on the right, you could pull up the document yourself, but that's, you know, that's one of the slides that I like to look at, but this is, this is basically the big mama jama, right? This is why I think that Spirit was acquired by Realty Income. It's because of the debt schedule, okay? So let's look at this debt schedule here. You can see how complementary the debt schedule is to Realty Incomes, right? The blue again represents Spirit and the orange um, represents the orange represents realty income. So first of all, nothing due to 2023. That year is already behind us. We're in 2024. 1.8 billion super manageable due. And you can see how the blue is added here when it's low, right? There's not a lot of debt due in 2025 for realty income. And boom, here comes another 800 mil from Spirit. And then um, this year is kind of heavy. 2026 is heavy for realty income, but not a lot coming in from spirit only 300 million extra and then 800 million 400 million and again look at how all the the ones that are really low like right here in 2029 for example um there's a 400 million extra from spirit and then another one is 950 454 you know so i think it's it really helps that it's the schedule basically is very complementary another thing that's really good and why I think this acquisition happened because of um, the debt is because the weighted average interest rate, you know, basically is, is really low. Um, it's lower for Spirit somehow than it is for, I think, Realty Income. And so I think it was a very, very good deal. And you can see how the highest year is 17.5% of the debt um, in 2026. The revolver here is 868 million, which is not very high. And then, um, you know, that year is going to be tough, but I'm sure they'll find a way to refinance a lot of that debt. And then after that is just 11.5, which is 2027 is the next highest year. So we're really looking at really low amounts of debt, I think, relative to the size of this company now, which is enormous. And I think that they're, they're actually free to do even more acquisitions, especially if they fund them with a date of 2029 and further. So if they can find, find a financier of some sort you know, to get that, um, those deals done, I think they, they could make it happen. I mean, you know, they, they continue to buy like crazy and maybe they're looking at other REITs now. They're looking at other companies, I mean, because otherwise it's just too slow to acquire properties on an individual basis. They've decided to do this, and I think this is a fantastic deal for them. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, all things clear and everything is going to be green ahead. It, Realty Incomes had a really nice run from 45 to 58, but uh, it could drop down further. I mean, it's all really dependent on market rates at this point. Um, the 30 years has dropped and and the 10 year has dropped but um, they might rise again uh, because 
the Fed has given no real indication of when they're going to drop short-term rates. And I think the long-term rates dropped in anticipation of that, but there really hasn't been any consensus. So I think the market's actually priced in a little too many drops too fast. And so the markets, especially REITs, usually run counter to the debt market. So as the, as the rates uh, rise, you know, the, the REITs will probably drop just like any other housing-related stuff, really. So that's my assessment. I think that um, it's a very good deal for realty income. Mainly, I think it's because of the debt schedule. Um, it is 2.5% accretive, as they claim. But we'll see how much of that is going to be realized with the next quarter's numbers. I'm looking forward to reading more about this company. I follow it greatly. And I'm finally going to be showing you my um, position. So I have a public account under Robinhood. Please don't throw shade on Robinhood, by the way. It's a very good broker now. It's got so many features that other brokers don't have. So I think it's actually very, very good. Um, I have a video that I just made on a real big damage that I had on MPW. So that's my bad. But this position is holding very strong. So here's realty income on Robinhood. The current position, $121,000 or um, 2,100 shares, which gives about a 50, I'm, I'm sorry, 500 and like 70-ish or something like that dividend per month. And I do have one option, call option sold, and then I have some call spreads um, that hopefully will give me some profit by I think May. Currently I'm up 50 bucks on them. I was down like 500 but now I'm up 50 so hopefully those materialize. I'm betting that um, in five months the markets will look even more positive hopefully than they do now. So we'll see how that goes. So that's my position. I'm really invested in this company. It's my largest position by far especially on the public account. Um, some of the other positions like I mentioned, medical uh, MPT or MPW, ticker symbol MPW, and then Main Street Capital is another big one, and a small position of Verizon at the moment, which I'm looking to exit uh, pretty soon on the 19th of January. All right, well, that's about it. Um, if you want to check out any of the other videos that I do on these, you know, all kinds of tickers, feel free to do so. I actually looked back at some of the ones that I've posted and had a pretty good hit record amazingly it's probably like 60 or 70 percent of what i thought was going to happen actually materialized unluckily for me though um mpw has been a really big hit and i just made a video about it of how some of the some news dropped on it where it's just not looking good so if you're a REIT investor and you hold that in, in your portfolio like i feel for you i'm suffering big losses with you all right, that's it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you got a little bit more insight into the latest and greatest of real team come. It's a little bit old news. The deal happened last year, but it's going to come into effect this January. So I feel like the timing is not that bad. All right, look forward to your company becoming, you know, billions of dollars more valuable. Peace out.